Good afternoon, everyone. Hope you guys are doing very well. We're going to be discussing about uh, spanning trees today. What are spanning trees? What is minimum spanning tree? Uh, how we can identify spanning trees from a graph? Uh, where they are used? What are basic uh, algorithms? Uh, and so on. Spanning trees have uh, real world applications in many areas. For example, network design. Let's say you're, you're developing an algorithm which has to optimize the route uh, for your data packets. You might end up uh, uh, creating a graph and then end up finding a uh, minimum spanning tree from your graph. In the same way, other application areas, uh, bioinformatics, for example, um, video recognition uh, in digital circuits. Electronic design automation tools, they end up making a graph uh, for a digital circuit and uh, for different analysis purposes, um, they end up creating these trees. All right, so let's talk about uh, a digital circuit. Okay, so as you can see here, we have a bunch of flip flops, uh, combinatorial logics, and NAND gate, AND gate, NOT gate. And if we connect these uh, in a hypothetical digital circuit, uh, as you can see here, uh, we end up making a very small hypothetical digital circuit. Now, how can we map this digital circuit to a graph? So think about uh, these uh, flip-flops, okay? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, these flip-flops, Think about as the nodes of a graph, okay? And the connection between these flip-flops, they become the edges. Now, you see here the combinatorial logic, we didn't make it a node because we are assuming that this will become a part of our edge. All the computation was going to happen uh, using these combinatorial logic will happen in one clock cycle. And these uh, the registers or flip flops or memory elements to store the state, okay, state of the digital circuit. So, in simple way, what we can do to create a graph out of this circuit? Very simple. We can represent all the flip flops as the nodes in a graph and the interconnection between these flip flops as the edge of a graph. For example, C is connected. The output of the C flip-flop is connected to input of G flip-flop via NOT and AND gate combination. Okay? And this whole thing becomes a, this whole thing uh, becomes our edge. So whatever is the cost associated with, with this combinatorial logic in terms of say uh, wire length, delay, or power consumption or many other properties you may think of that uh, you can associate with the uh, with the edge or these become properties of the edge okay in the same way you can connect from uh, b to f b to g so different different paths between different nodes and these different paths you may think of different edges okay and each edge will have different uh, property or let's say we talk about the delay okay delay between uh, c to g okay so that delay okay delay between c to g you may think of as a weight okay? weight of the edge between c to g okay so just for for an example Let's say you are optimizing for delay. Okay. So, so as you can see here, we have uh, simply uh, represented this this whole digital circuit uh, pictorial representation into a graph representation. V node is nothing but a register or flip flop, and E connects in between registers. Very simple. Nothing complicated here. Now let's talk about uh, the spanning tree of this graph. So we have this graph. What we mean by the 
spanning trees. Okay, so there can be many trees of of this out of this graph. So a spanning tree is is nothing but a subgraph of this original graph G. Okay, with the property that uh, the subgraph is a tree. And there, there won't be any cycle in that subgraph. And as many subgraphs as we have, we can think of as many spanning trees. The spanning is nothing but basically a tree which is spanning this whole graph. And minimum spanning tree, again, we will just discuss that if we associate weight with each edge, we can count the total weight of the graph and total weight of subgraph or span, spanning tree. So there, there might be different uh, spanning trees with a different total weight. So out of the, all those trees, whichever tree will have minimum weight, we call it minimum spanning tree. And minimum minimum spanning tree T, it will, it is basically a set of edges, okay, and subset of the total edges in our, in our graph. So we can simply define a minimum spanning tree is a spanning tree which has minimum weight. As we discussed that we can put different weights uh, on these edges. And weights you may think of delay or some other property of, of digital circuit. Uh, the idea for this lecture is to give you uh, basic concepts about spanning trees. Okay. And the weight, total weight of a spanning tree is nothing but the weight of all the edges, weight of all the edges which belong to this spanning tree. That becomes the weight of a spanning tree. Good. There are two major categories of algorithms for finding out spanning trees and to find out a minimum spanning tree from a graph, Kruskal algorithm and Prim's algorithm. Okay. The time complexity is very similar or the same time complexity if we use binary heaps data structure and that turns out to be E edges multiplied by log of V that is number of vertices. The same for the uh, prims if we use binary heap. Okay. Now there is an interesting aspect here that uh, if we use Fibonacci heaps okay, and uh, our number of vertices, okay, these are considerably lower than our number of edges. Then you know we get little advantage on, on timing. In the order of e plus v log v, if we use Fibonacci heap and and we have uh, uh, considerably lower vertices in our graph than edges, number of edges. Okay. So we're going to be discussing about Kruskal and uh, Prince algorithms in coming lectures. Uh, the focus of this lecture is to to introduce about. Uh, introduce concept uh, for spanning trees. And we're going to be discussing a generic algorithm for, for finding a minimum spanning tree. That algorithm may not be optimal, but yes, it, uh, it does work. Good. So, so let's talk about uh, generic minimum spanning tree algorithm. Okay. This algorithm is very simple algorithm. Initially, let's say we have a tree, uh, T. T is representing nothing but a set of edges which make a minimum spanning tree. Good. Now we execute operations 3 to 4. If we, we keep on executing these 3 to 4 steps till we find an edge which is safe to add to T. Now, the, how this algorithm going to work? Say we have uh, w1 to w9, nine edges total. So it will pick up each edge and then it will decide whether I should put that edge 
in set T or not. Okay. So this safe is a tricky concept here. Now what edge becomes safe to put in the T and what edge does not become safe. Now this also makes sure that the edge which we are going to put in the tree T which we say minimum spanning tree uh, at the end when this algorithm will finish. So that particular edge the decision how it is going to take that is uh, that's the key item here. But before discussing that let us uh, define certain concepts about a cut. What is a cut? So let us say um, the cut is nothing but that you are dividing the set of vertices in two parts. That is a cut. Okay. So let us say you have divided this, this whole set of vertices say A, B, C in one group and D, E, F, G in another group and it becomes a cut. The set of vertices in one group let us call it S and set of vertices in another group let us call it V minus S. Okay. Now how to make a cut um, that is a another tricky thing but this algorithm relies on the cut. If we have a smart cut uh, we will get a very good result out of this algorithm. Okay. Uh, in general the idea behind the cut is that, that uh, your cut uh, should include most of the edges if it can. Okay. This is a very simple graph uh, example graph algorithm but you may think of if you have say 1000 nodes or a million nodes for example for a very complex uh, chip uh, uh, say microprocessor for example. So that time you know you need a more efficient uh, process to finding out minimum spanning tree. But here for our simple example um, just keep in mind that uh, if the cut has uh, most of the edges in it then this algorithm works very well. So what is a cut? Say at certain point in time um, so cut we already said okay we divided in two parts. In one part we say we color the ver vertexes or vertices by black or gray color. Okay. And in the another part we do not color it, leave it white. Okay. And at certain point in time your uh, algorithm is executing and it finds okay the edge between u and y is in the t. Okay. So that edge belongs to t and also the edge between y and v belongs to t. Now we have to make a decision. Uh, for the edge u and v. Now since u and v if we include in the t it forms a cycle okay? because we can go u, y and v and if we include it it becomes cycle and we do not want any cycle here. There will be no cycle in, in your spanning tree okay? or in that subgraph. So now what do we do? That is where the, this cut becomes very useful and a little associated concept with that that let us say the weight. Okay. So now if we are going to include u and v and we do not want any cycle either we remove the edge between y and v or we remove an edge between u and y. Which one should we choose? That is where this cut is helping us. So we will just simply choose the edge which is being cut that is between u and y. Now should we take u and y in t or should we take u and v in t? That decision depends whose weight is lower. Okay. So if the weight of u and y okay, is greater than the weight of u and v then we just simply chop u and y from the tree T and include uh, new vertices, a new edge U and V in our minimum spanning tree. And that makes sure that we will not have any cycle and that edge is now safe to include in T. How the, the final tree will look like? Let us say for example T tick 
original was t we chopped that off the edge u v edge between u and v we taken off from the t and we added edge between u and v now we're going to add only if the weight between u and v is lower than the weight between u and y all right you may think of uh, uh, in an equation, say, if that weight between weight of the new edge between u and v, that makes the overall weight of the tree lower than before. So, let's say the new tree's weight, t tick weight, would be the weight of the tree before deleting and inserting the new edge okay so that weight minus since we're gonna remove the edge between u and y so we remove the weight or we minus the weight from the wt okay and we add the new weight of the new edge which we're gonna add to the tree and if we find that wt tick that is the new weight is lower or equal to the, the original weight before adding or subtracting. Means that we are good, we, we, can, we can remove the edge between u and y and we can add edge between u and v. And that, that will make uh, the overall weight lower and will make sure that there, there is no cycle. Okay, so we could keep on doing this operation or this, these three and four uh, steps of this algorithm till we have no more safe edge left to be added to t. Good. Very simple. Now let's take an example. Without example, it doesn't make any fun. Good, right. So you may think of the weight as numbers or let's say there is some function. You have defined some cost function which is mapping the properties of edge whatever it is delay uh, you know temperature or you know area or power consumption whatever it is let's say there is exists a function f which is mapping the property of the edge to a real number and we get some number here so we just hypothetically put some number here, okay, assuming that we have such a mapping function. So how are we going to find, uh, apply the, this generic MST algorithm on this small graph? Let's see. So after putting the different uh, numbers or labels on these uh, edges, now let's try to apply. Now let's see here what happened. So we, we did cut we did cut the whole graph in two parts and whatever vertices are in S, one part, we colored it to gray or black and remaining vertices V minus S since we were the total vertices we had will be in the second part and uh, we didn't color those uh, vertices or nodes of the graph. Okay, And uh, initially we do not have anything in the T in our original uh, tree t. So we pick up some one edge which is being cut. Let's say that edge is a and e. Okay. So edge becomes our a and e between a and e. And we say okay that belongs to our spanning tree now. So it will have edge between A and E. Just one edge. And what would be the weight of the tree? Just simply the weight of this edge. Now we apply the same procedure for another edge which is being cut. Let's say between A and D, we got the new weight and these two edges in our in our spanning tree 
t okay now we move to the next edge which is a and b but we could have gone to e and b ideally because it is being cut uh, but let's say we we go to a and b you can you can also execute the algorithm let's say this edge between e and b is cut you can take that next edge uh, but here i have just taken this b so you you it's a very simple example you might end up getting the same uh, result but nevertheless uh, there is uh, some reason behind it because i want to explain certain thing uh, for the edge between b and e okay so don't worry about it and you can visualize how we uh, the r tree is uh, unfolding so we went to a to b a to e a to d okay and weight is 9 3 plus 2 plus 4 now because i wanted to explain this concept that's why i didn't pick it up uh, b to e earlier so you see here if we pick it up b to e now we are forming a cycle because now from e to a it's already connected and we have to make a decision whether we should keep edge a to e in our tree or we should keep edge b to e in our tree we have to make a decision so what do we do we simply uh, mimic or say that okay we include the edge between b and e and we remove uh, temporarily between a and e and what would be the new weight so the new weight gonna be uh, wt tick 9 minus 3 because we we have just mimicked that we have removed the edge between a and e and we are just trying to find out the new weight what the new weight gonna be so 9 minus 3 plus 8 which comes to be 14 and which is greater than the original weight it means that if we include the edge between b and e our tree will not be will not have minimum weight okay so we just keep our tree as it is we do not include b and e in our uh, spanning tree t okay so that that was the concept i wanted to explain uh, which is nothing but uh, we we just said in the cut and uh, in these uh, equations uh, say equation number equation number two we check that condition and that is nothing but we are checking here the safe whether uh, the edge b and e is safe to put in t or not all right now let's move on to the next step very simple then we we add the next uh, edge b and f and calculate new weight there is nothing else no cycle is getting formed we keep on moving next edge next edge so we finally found a minimum spanning tree from this simple graph okay now you see here how we have uh, got a tree minimum spanning tree how it is unfolded so it, it has the edges a to b a to e a to d b b to f b to c c to g these edges this minimum spanning tree would have at the end uh, when this uh, algorithm will will quit all right uh, so this was a very simple you know generic minimum spanning tree um, algorithm based on greedy approach um, greedy approach as you know they don't uh, work very well that's why you know the the other algorithms we have uh, more advanced algorithms uh, to find minimum spanning tree out of a graph which we're gonna be learning uh, in future lectures so thank you very much guys uh, thank you for liking the professor videos on YouTube. Thank you for subscribing and your wonderful comment. We really appreciate your feedback and uh, we are trying to improve the quality of the content and as much as help uh, we can provide to you guys so that you guys do not have to sit in the class and listen boring lectures. You can just tune into the professor YouTube channel and good to go. You can learn anything you want and anywhere say you are sitting in a coffee shop just tune in to Lee professor and uh, here you go you're learning beautiful concepts you are not bound with the class anymore all right so thank you very much guys 
and those who have not subscribed please do subscribe we really appreciate your your help and do like the videos um, we are getting good good response from you guys and that is indicating that you guys are liking our videos and i as i always say algorithms are all everywhere in every walk of life you can uh, find algorithms and it's fun to learn all right have a wonderful day guys